Hi there, my name is Jordi, and I'll teach you how to start with a correct project within Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. Once we have opened Premiere, we'll see this welcome screen, and we click on New Project. In the first step, we'll need to select whether we'll work on our hardware graphical card or on the processor, which is software-based. Only a few graphical cards have the option to work with Premiere Pro. This, of course, is much faster, and it will allow you to work more in real time. You can check out adobe.com slash Premiere Pro to find out which graphical cards are supported. If your graphical card is not supported, this box will be grayed out. This option can always be changed during editing, as well as how we want to display our timeline and audio. The capture format is when you want to load a video from a tape-based video camera. Select whether it's DV or HDV. You can find this on your camera. On the second tab you'll see scratch disks. This is the place where all the background video and audio information is being stored. Change this to a hard drive where you have enough space on it. Then last, we'll need to choose where to store our project. Premiere Pro will also create cache folders in that same place. In that folder we are also going to place all our footage. Give the project a name and press OK. And this is step 2. A lot of people make mistakes right here. We'll need to define a sequence. This is going to be your timeline or work area. It's very important that you match the sequence settings with your source video. If you don't exactly know what the settings are, then look at your source information. It's very important that these match, unless you have a good reason for it. Since many people shoot on DSLRs, we'll choose that option. Digital SLR. Now choose the correct frame size in which we have been recording, and then choose the frame rate. On the right side you'll see a detailed summary of your chosen settings. If we go to the settings tab we can change these values. The frame rate. Many cameras shoot in 50 or 60 frames per second these days. But that is for slow motion purposes. If you want to enjoy that slow motion you'll need to take half of that frame rate. So for a clip that was shot in 50 frames per second we'll use a 25 frame per second time base. For the Americans, watch closely to the exact frame rate of your source clip. 30 frames per second or 29.97 frames per second is not the same. Next is the frame size or the resolution in pixels of your clips. For widescreen this is a 16 by 9 ratio. A non-widescreen has a 4 by 9 ratio. There are also special ratios. For example the cinema scope which is 2 by 1. Then we have the pixel aspect ratio. And this is very important. Many things go wrong right here. This determines the white of your pixel. For example, if we use HD anamorphic, the pixel will stretch to achieve the same 16 by 9 ratio with less pixels. Many cameras use this, so pay attention for that. A wrong pixel aspect ratio can lead to a weird looking stretched video. The field option is whether we have shot in progressive or interlaced. Progressive scan means that each frame is a full image. So we have in this example 25 full images per second. If we have shot in interlaced we have the option to choose upper or lower field first. This is usually in a 50 or 60 frames time base. The camera has been recording 50 half frames and in total 25 full frames. Pay attention, this is not for slow motion. The reason many people choose this option during recording is to have a more smooth motion. But there are many discussions about that. I would also recommend to shoot in progressive. It gives you more possibilities when it comes to compositing. When you see stripes on your video, you have probably gone wrong on this setting. We'll leave the display format since we can change this during editing. Choose the same audio sample rate as your source clip. Choosing a higher sample rate will not give you better sound quality. And then last is the video preview. This is the size of the preview, not the final output nor the space you work in. This is usually the resolution of your main monitor, minus the taskbar. Now we have set up our sequence to start with. 
We can always create new sequences with different settings inside our project. Name your sequence and press OK. Welcome in Adobe Premiere Pro CS6.